Okay, good afternoon and welcome to today's virtual design review panel meeting. On our agenda, we have a development proposal at 365 Highway 8 in Stony Creek. Uh, my name is Edward Winter, urban designer at the City of Hamilton and hosting this meeting. And our chair of the design review panel, David Cluzio, will chair the meeting. In addition to our panel members, we have the applicant team, city staff, members of the public and media observing this meeting today. Members of the public are welcomed here to observe the meeting, um, but there are no questions or comments from the public today. This meeting is being recorded and will be uploaded to the City of Hamilton's uh, Des Design Review Panel webpage. Lastly, a reminder to our panelists to keep your microphones muted when not speaking. Thank you for everyone attending our Design Review Panel. David, please begin when you're ready. Yeah, good uh, afternoon and welcome everyone. Uh, Edward, can you please confirm that this session is being recorded? And we are recording. Okay, are there any changes to the agenda today? No. Okay, I'll assume silence means that there are no panelists with any kind of conflict of interest. Okay, um, on the agenda today is the review of 365 Highway 8. The lead planner in the fall on the file is Mark Michniak, who is available to answer any policy questions, and Edward Winter will make a brief presentation. So go ahead, Edward. You Five minutes, uh, hopefully. Thank you. The proposed development lands are shown in a white uh, irregular rectangle shape. Uh, and there's one existing building that is proposed to be demolished to in, uh, facilitate the construction of the proposed nine story mixed use building. Uh, which would contain 189 residential units and 273 square meters of commercial space on the ground floor. It would also include 188 parking spaces within two levels of underground parking and surface parking. There are also proposed 16 short term and 139 long term bicycle spaces. Okay, and then of course we have highway number eight, the primary road uh, proceeding diagonally. And we have our major uh, intersection to the west, uh, diagonally from the bottom is King. You see surrounding uh, predominantly uh, low-rise residential, uh, and then along Highway 8, we have a mix of commercial uh, and institutional uses uh, with some varying size of lots uh, in this section of town. In the center, uh, noting the subject site, and again, the two story to the east and one story commercial to the west. Facing uh, south, uh, looking uh, away from the, the subject site, uh, much the similar uh, situation on the south side of Highway 8, and then looking on to the escarpment uh, quite, a, quite a ways back in the, in the distance. All right, the top photo is looking east along Highway 8. Uh, again, we see uh, predominantly low rise residential and this commercial spine along Highway 8. And similarly in the lower photograph, uh, looking west along uh, Highway 8. And then in the center of the screen uh, down uh, at the major intersection, we can just see uh, a larger building, uh, which is a photograph here. Uh, this is seven stories, um, approximately half a block to the west. So there is some uh, some recent or more recent uh, development in the area. Here is a conceptual site plan. Highway eight is running north south on the left hand side of the page. Uh, we have a commercial unit uh, out front, and driveway with parking in the back and ramp access to the underground at the back of the building. And uh, some degree of landscaping around on all sides. Some of our staff comments uh, from the original submission are that we uh, staff supported uh, the project in principle uh, as the urban Hamilton official plan supported intensification and the mix of uses along the secondary corridor. Uh, in order to implement this as uh, 
development would require an official plan amendment and zoning bylaw amendment. Uh, staff did note some concerns with the layout uh, on site uh, with two entrances, a one way drive aisle. Um, okay. Staff identified potential conflict along the eastern drive aisle that included inconsistent uh, pedestrian pathways and the parallel parking, which may conflict with loading and waste loading. And staff were requesting a commercial needs of, uh, and impact assessment to accompany the proposal. So for today's uh, discussion, we have three questions. Does the proposal represent compatible integration with the surrounding area in the terms of use, scale, form, and character? Does the proposal promote intensification that makes appropriate and innovative use of buildings and sites and is compatible in form and function to the character of the existing community and neighborhoods. And lastly, Highway 8, which is designated as a secondary corridor, is antici anticipated to evolve over time to become a vibrant pedestrian and transit oriented place. Does the proposal exemplify this evolution and does the proposal organize this space in a logical manner through the design placement and construction of new building, uh, the street and structure and landscaping. And that concludes the staff presentation. Thanks, Edward. If we could go to the proponent for their presentation and keep it within 10 minutes, please. Great, thank you. Share my screen here. Great, I'm hoping everyone can see that okay. Um, so thanks everyone for joining us today. So my name is Liam Murphy. I'm a senior planner with Bosefields. I'm joined here by uh, Danny Papetti from Office Architecture, who's the uh, architect on this project. Um, we are the planning consultants on behalf of the ownership group who uh, owns 365 um, Highway 8. Um, so I'm going to go through the first few slides here just to give a context in terms of where the site is relative to the surrounding neighborhood and just touch briefly um, on the planning policies that apply to the site. Let's jump here. So on the surrounding context map, you can see here, so the property is located uh, east of the intersection of Highway 8 uh, and King Street East, and then west of the intersection of Worsley Street and Highway 8. Um, the site is located along the Highway 8 corridor, which includes predominantly commercial uses along Highway 8, and it also includes a mix of other medium density developments. Um, as Edward mentioned, there's, there's some recent uh, mid-rise developments going on to the east. Um, or to the west, I should say, and then there's also some existing mid-rise developments that are located along Highway 8 to the east. Um, so the Highway 8 corridor is predominantly comprised of um, commercial uh, uses located along the Highway 8 corridor. Um, and then further beyond the corridor is a mix of low-rise, um, single detached, uh, and other townhouse-type dwellings, uh, as you can see within that surrounding 800-meter context. Um, the area is within convenient walking distance to several community amenities, services, restaurants, and places to shop along Highway 8. Um, and there are also several parks and schools located within that 800 meter proximity, as you can see here within this 800 meter boundary on the site. Moving on to the neighborhood context. So within the immediate neighborhood context, there's a mix of uses um, that are existing. Um, so, as you can see, immediately to the north is a mix of um, low rise residential uses shown in yellow to the east and to the west. Uh, immediately abutting the site are a mix of commercial uses, including 1 story commercial plazas. Um, a church is located further to the west, as you can see there in the purple, just about 100 meters uh, within the site boundary there. Um, further to the west at the northeast corner of the intersection of Ellington Avenue and King Street East. So just over here on the west hand side. Um, there's a three-story retirement residence located along the Highway 8 corridor. Um, on the other side of Ellington Avenue, further to the west, um, there's an approved, recently approved 11-story um, residential building. And then just further to the west of that, as Edward showed in his uh, presentation there, there's a recently constructed seven-story residential building. And then land uses just to the south of the site are uh, comprised of some other commercial and retail uses, including a gas station, and a commercial um, retail plaza with a mix of personal service uses um, and some rice restaurants and, and takeout places. Moving along to the planning context. So 
As Edward mentioned, uh, 365 Highway 8 is located along a secondary corridor uh, in the urban Hamilton official plan on Schedule E. Also, as Edward mentioned, these secondary corridors are intended to evolve into an increasing proportion of multiple story mixed use buildings um, with that great retail and service commercial uses. Um, and the city is generally supportive of the evolution of these corridors with mixed use forms and is and is um, occurring throughout the city elsewhere along these uh, key secondary corridors. Uh, some other things to note just about this is that there are um, existing neighborhood designations that apply to the north to the south. Uh, just beyond the secondary corridor. Moving on to schedule E1 of the urban Hamilton official plan. So the site is designated currently as district commercial. Um, however, as Edward mentioned, an official plan amendment is being um, applied for as part of this development application. Um, the proposed designation uh, would allow for a mixed use medium density development. Um, generally, the mixed use medium development uh, designation permits uh, between two to six stories with additional height permissions up to 12 stories, uh, subject to meeting a few criteria, including providing for progressive stepbacks from low rise housing forms, uh, providing setbacks along the street frontage to minimize the height appearance from the public realm, uh, as well as mitigating potential impacts on adjacent lands relating to items such as winds, shadows, etc. And so the site is located within the Western Development Area Secondary Plan. Uh, again, it's designated as District Commercial. Um, as I mentioned before, an official plan amendment is being requested uh, to redesignate the site from this District Commercial designation to the Mixed Use Medium Density designation. Um, a zoning bylaw is also being requested as part of this application uh, to redesignate the site from the current District Commercial C6 zone to the Mixed Use Medium Density C5 zone. Uh, just moving along a little bit here. So Edward showed uh, some site photos already, so I don't have to get into these in too much detail, but um, so just looking north uh, towards the site from Highway 8, you can see that we have an existing one story, uh, existing service commercial use that would be here. This was a former restaurant. As you can see, it's in uh, pretty bad shape at the moment. Um, you can also see on the images on the uh, image two and image three here are the existing one story uh, commercial uses uh, that are located on both the east and west side immediately abutting the site. Uh, these ones just show some photos uh, looking south towards the escarpment of the rear of the site. So yeah, as Edward mentioned too, you can see the escarpment vaguely here in the background as well. Liam, I just caution you are more than halfway through your time allocation. Okay, all right. I'll jump through these ones really quick then. Um, these photos just show the existing street context along the Highway 8 corridor. And then these last photos here just show the view from Deerhurst Road looking south towards the subject site. This is in that existing established residential neighborhood. Uh, so I'm now going to pass it over to Denny Papetti at Office Architecture just to walk you guys through the architectural plans for the site. Thanks. I don't know if we're here. Yes. I'm not hearing anything from yeah. him. Yeah. I don't know if he's. Uh, I'm also not seeing him being connected. Actually. Okay. I see him in here still, so I'm not sure what's going on. Um, what I'm not seeing is the ability to have a camera or a mic on my. When I look beside his name, is he actually um, identified as a panelist, when, uh, to Edward? Or just an attendee. Uh, he should be a, a panelist. Okay. Okay. Let me see. He raised his hand at the beginning, so I think he was able to get in here. Well, I'm seeing his name here as an attendee, but I don't see a camera or a mic symbol beside his name, which suggests that uh, I don't know if he's got full connectivity for some reason. Okay. Um, 
just check. He does have presenter. Um, oh, there's a chat. Having difficulty connecting to both video and audio. Sent a note to Denny just asking him if he could try and rejoin. So, Edward, if he tries to rejoin or if you could just let him in. Yes, will do. Thanks. Is there a way, Liam, that you could start presenting or do you feel that Denny should do that? I don't mind walking through it. I can, I can start and then can double back if Denny has any other comments to add. Okay. So, um, just with respect to the architectural plan, so as Edward already pulled up, there was a preliminary site plan that was shown that showed some landscaping, which we'll touch on a little bit further on in the presentation. But um, so there is an existing, or not an existing, I should say, sorry, there's a proposed um, drive aisle, as you can see here, that would be located on the east hand side of the site. Um, this provides access towards the um, parallel tandem parking spaces that are located here. Uh, and then also towards the ramp below, which provides access to the two levels of below grade parking. Uh, on the ground floor, there is a commercial unit located adjacent to Highway 8 on the far uh, south side of the building. Um, there's also residential units that wrap around both the east and west sides with at grade access along these um, at grade entrances here, uh, also located along the east and west sides of the building. Um, just gonna see, sorry, Denny, if Denny's gonna jump on. No, okay. Um, and then with respect to parking, there is a surface parking uh, area that's located towards the rear of the site to provide a buffer between the building um, and the neighborhood uses located to the north. So moving along. So this is another view of the ground floor. So there is the commercial unit that is located along the King Street frontage. And, and the um, mix of residential units located with on that, within the ground floor, as well as the waste uh, and loading areas located towards the north portion of the building. And then with respect to the typical floor plans that apply throughout the site, so there is a mix of one bedroom, one bedroom plus 10, two bedroom, and then three bedroom units uh, located on floors uh, one all the way up to floor nine. You can jump through these. And then these units range in size. So one bedroom unit sizes are between 469 square feet to 700 square feet. Um, one bedroom plus 10 units are between 561 to 752 square feet. And then two bedroom units are between 814 to 974 square feet. And then we have our three bedroom units that are between 965 square feet to 1,020 square feet. And just some comments on the building design. So it is a single corridor building uh, with the units that wrap around. Um, the intent is that all of these units as you move upwards towards the sixth story have a, a terrace area. Um, there's no balconies that are proposed. They're, they're Juliet balconies located throughout um, the building. Just moving a little bit further along. And then with respect to the ninth floor, so on the ninth floor, we are proposing to have some indoor and outdoor amenity space uh, located towards the south portion of the building. Um, there are some terrace spaces, as I mentioned, throughout the units above the sixth story. And then there is the underground parking that's proposed. So as, as Edward mentioned, there are two levels of underground parking that is provided. Just get through these, we can talk a little bit more. Uh, again, so just an example of the landscape concept that currently has been designed. So there is landscaping features that are proposed to wrap around the building um, and really enhance those pedestrian at grade connections for some of these units uh, on the ground floor. And then just with respect to elevations and sections, we can, can go through these briefly. So um, the building is proposed to be nine stories along with the mechanical penthouse. Um, just moving along to the side profile of the side profile of the building, you can see that it is progressively stepped back um, towards the north side, uh, which is the site that's closest to the neighborhood uses. 
uh, as well, there's also a step back along the King Street East side frontage here um, towards the south. Yeah, I think we're going to want to shift shortly over to the questions. Sure, sure no problem. We have given you a little uh, bit more time because of your technical challenges, but I think we're thank you. Time to wrap thank this you up. Much appreciated. Okay, yeah, we'll wrap up here. So, just with respect to massing, so this is a view just looking west down Highway uh, Highway Eight. Uh, so you can see how the building progressively steps in above that fifth story. And then just with respect to the angular plane um, that we've applied to the rear of the building adjacent to those residential uses, you can see that um, the 45 degree angular plane due to these step backs above that fifth story uh, helps to alleviate any potential shadow impacts or overlook issues. And then just some final images of the proposed rendering of the building. And the uh, grade uh, unit access. And then just with respect to shadows, just really briefly, um, we're not anticipating any adverse shadow impact through the stepping of the building. There are some minor shadowing impacts that occur just with respect to this residential unit along Deerhurst um, Road at 1150, but then you can see they progressively move off the site by about 1 p.m. And then we can probably transition over to the to the questions there. I appreciate that extra time there. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Leah. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Dana, if you have any questions. Uh, I don't have any questions. Thank you, David. Um, Jennifer Mallard. Thank you, and and thank you for your presentation. I I, I realize, um, well, I, I have a bunch of questions, and we'll see what can be answered if if Danny is is not here. Um, okay. um, my first question, though, is for the city. Um, this is being rezoned from commercial to mixed use, so we don't have a zoning um, understanding of units per hectare and the density that would be permitted on the site. Um, uh, in this case, if if this gets approved, will this be setting a precedent then for uh, density permitted in this area uh, at units per hectare? We've been discussing the, the proposed density of the site and, and it's hard to measure how what is appropriate when when there's no um, zoning bylaw there to to look to. So uh, uh, so Mark Mishnack here, planner from the city of Hamilton. Uh, so we don't have a, a density number in the zoning. Uh, however, uh, the the site is uh, designated uh, within the, the official plan and the uh, secondary plan. I don't have the density numbers off the top of my head right now, unfortunately. I can follow up if needed, uh, but however, that whatever zoning we do land on uh, would have to be within those those numbers set. Um, and uh, if there would if there's any proposed changes to those numbers, that would have to be provided in their planning justification report if it, it's included in the, in the official plan amendment. Um, so I don't think I would say that we're necessarily setting a higher density on this corridor, as as mentioned by the applicants and Edward, uh, that this is a uh, identified as a corridor. Uh, which was uh, anticipated to, to to accommodate more density. Okay, thank you. Um, another question uh, on the site plan: there is an easement identified across the back of the site. Could you uh, clarify for us what kind of easement that is? Is it underground services, and how does that limit the development of the building? Jennifer, I'm assuming you were asking me that question that not still on the city, correct? I, I guess so. Whoever has that info. Yeah. Okay, I, I can speak to that. So, yeah, so there is an easement that's located towards the south portion or sorry, I should say the north portion of the property. I'm just going to pull up uh, this plan here just really quickly. Uh, so, as you can see, just on this one, so the, there actually is uh, a vacant parcel that's located just further to the north of, of our parcel. And so we believe that the easement's tied with that. Uh, it is underground servicing from our understanding, and that's going to form part of our um, servicing 
uh, and feasibility report that's being prepared as part of the um, official plan and zoning bylaw amendment. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, it was mentioned um, in the city presentation that a commercial needs assessment was um, requested. Has that been done and what were the findings? So that had been identified as a requirement of the submission. Uh, this this meeting is happening uh, prior to that submission, so we have not yet okay. received that document. Yeah, collectively, uh, our group had had some questions about what kind of commercial goes in there. So, um, and that in influences traffic and parking and all sorts of things. So that would help understanding um, that. And maybe maybe I can just jump in on that too. So that is going to form part of our planning justification report. We do have a section that's dedicated to to uh, discuss that commercial needs impact assessment. And my last question uh, for the for the client or for the client group, um, what sustainability measures are um, proposed for this project? Sure, I can I can touch on that a bit briefly as well. So just a few kind of key things that we've been looking at in terms of the orientation of the building to try and maximize efficiency in terms of the orientation as the sun uh, moves throughout the day from the east to the west side of the building. Uh, another component that we've looked to incorporate would be um, not having any um, balconies that project just to try and um, ensure that there is efficient, uh, you know, transfers of hot air and cold air throughout those warmer and colder months so that, you know, paying to heat the inside, it's not being transferred outside and then vice versa. Um, but we are going to consider some additional sustainability measures as part of the detailed design stage once we get to that point. Okay. Thank you. That's all the questions for me at this point. Thank you. Uh, Jennifer Susan. Thank you. Um, I have two questions. One of them I think would be for Liam and one's for the city, I think. Um, for the city, and you may not be able to answer this, but I was wondering what the projected timelines are, if known, for the evolution to that transit-oriented and pedestrian-friendly area. Uh, are there any kind of high-order transit that's publicly known coming to the area in the near future? Oh, you're muted. Hello. Sorry. Uh, yeah. So I don't. I don't think the plan sets a timeline uh, for the evolution specifically in the policies. However, uh, we do have King Street uh, Highway Eight identified as as a place for higher dense or higher level uh, order transit. Thanks, Mark. Um, and Liam, I was wondering, you'd shown slightly more parking than is um, currently required by the zoning. Um, I was hoping you might speak to why of that. For, for sure. Yeah, that, yeah, that's a great question. And, and this came up um, through many of our kind of internal discussions as well. So just given the context of where the building is relative to the existing transit options that are there, we were aiming to try and provide a parking space basically per unit um, with the understanding that, you know, most people in this in this area, just given the transit connectivity and, and the surrounding context, uh, would like we need a vehicle um, to get around. Thank you. That's all for my questions. Um, I guess I just have one supplementary question. There is uh, on your uh, frontage on eight, uh, Highway Eight. You have. I, I wonder if you can explain the the design there and the the nature of it, the setback and whatnot. Was a little confused trying to understand what was marked off sure in terms of sure right of yeah. ways and okay. things like that yeah absolutely actually i can pull up uh pull up the plan here and i can zoom in and i can show you so second here there we go this is the one uh, and, and, and i think there's a conflict with the zoning that's identified, if you could just explain what it is and what your, you know, the reasoning behind. Sure, sure, absolutely. So, just with respect to the commercial unit and the setback, so there is um, a right of way or a, a road allowance that's being um, given towards the site. Uh, we also wanted to have um, the building set back just a bit from highway in order to provide some landscaping um, there between the commercial unit and um, the highway frontage. Um, 
again, the specific type of commercial unit uh, hasn't necessarily been decided at this point, whether it be a restaurant, a cafe, grocery store. So we wanted to maintain a, enough of a setback so that if it is something such as a restaurant, you know, we have that distance for, um, you know, a patio space or something like that. Um, we also wanted to ensure that there's connectivity for the commercial unit outside of the actual unit itself. So we do have this walkway that extends um, east to west in front of that commercial unit as well. So you're saying that 4.9 is is a is something that's being the road allowance is being increased to that. Is, is that correct? so the road allowance? So it it goes to where this dashed property line is here. If you can see that, right. And then this would be the landscape buffer between. Okay, so the landscape buffer is your strategy. It's just the labeling suggested in the top that the 4.9 was the road allowance. And I was trying to figure out uh, whether that meant that there was a, an increase in the width of the roadway. So, so what is the actual required setback or versus what you're doing? So I believe the zoning is 4.5 meters um, from the property line, and we're proposing just about 7, uh, 7.02. Okay, thank you. To the face of the building. So I'm going to turn it over to Dana for commentary. Um, sorry, David, sorry, one more. David, did you have a question on the zoning too? I know you mentioned that at the end there. Did you have a question about the zoning belief that's being no, requested? No, you clarified what I was okay. looking for. Thank you very much. Oh, okay, great. Sorry, David, it's, it's time for comments then? Yes, yes sorry, I wasn't, maybe if I wasn't clear. Okay, sorry, yeah, I, was, I thought so, I just wasn't quite sure. Um, I just wanna thank Liam and the team for um, a great presentation and for um, working with the city to kind of iterate this, I know this isn't your first um, submission that you've submitted, and I appreciate your ability to kind of work with the city um, to move this forward and to bring it to our panel. Um, from my perspective, I do. There's a lot of things that are commendable. The number of trees that you've been able to plant on the site, um, considering commercial and residential in a mixed-use building, I do like the design of the building. I think it's simple. Um, for the scale of the building being kind of a, a smaller, tall building, I think that, you know, choosing a design that's like elegant and straightforward um, does a lot for this development. I don't know. Sorry, I think I'm getting some feedback. Um, I just, I do think from a further iteration to the design, I think what you have right now in terms of outdoor amenity space. Um, it's a little bit lacking. I think what you could do in terms of quality is push some of the rear surface parking underground and try to have a uh, larger uh, communal amenity space at grade. I think this is particularly important because you're proposing Juliet balcony. So there's a really a lack of private amenity space also as part of the development. So really focusing on kind of upping that communal outdoor amenity space, I think is really critical. Um, I think currently, as it stands, the circulation of the rear and vehicles on site um, is a bit challenging with having kind of those parallel parking spaces for commercial units. Um, and I think that if you kind of remove that and look at focusing that on amenity and focusing more of the parking underground, I think you'll see kind of an improvement to the site design overall. Otherwise, um, I appreciate your commitment to sustainability moving forward, and I do like um, that you're able to integrate residential within this commercial corridor. Uh, that's everything for me. Thank you. Um, Jennifer Mallard. Thanks, David. Uh, thanks for this presentation. I, I agree uh, that um, this is a great design. I, I uh, it's it's bold, it's simple, uh, it, um, it's cohesive, um, and I think it'll, it'll set a good design standard as this, this part of the city gets, gets developed. Um, I do have some concerns about its density, and, and if every piece parcel was developed as dense as that, then there wouldn't be any uh, grade-related green space left um the the side yards are quite tight um and as mentioned earlier dana mentioned the parking at the back 
uh, if if it was given over to green space, I'd, I'd have a lot less concerns about um, it sitting on the site. Um, and and in our our panel met in our preview meeting, and and we were talking about ways that maybe that access to the underground parking could be revised so that that backyard could be reserved as a backyard and, and a, a more private amenity space. I leave that to you. Um, my question earlier about the type of commercial space um, was because I, I, we're looking at the plan and that commercial space um, doesn't have a garbage area or a separate loading area. Um, maybe it doesn't need it, but maybe it does. Um, and uh, begs the question, does this project need a commercial space at all? If it's going to be a commercial space that's empty, then that's not leading or contributing to the public realm. Would that be better as a public amenity space for the residents um, uh, with, a, with a patio up front? Um, that might contribute to a neighborhood uh, better than a vacant um, uh, commercial space. Um, those parallel parking spots along the drive aisle, uh, as noted by the city, some concern about how vehicles come in there and, and make a U-turn and, and get into those parking spaces uh, and that U-turning vehicles, if, if that contributes to a condition that's a little less safe for pedestrians walking around, that's a concern. So um, uh, I, I think there's a couple of simple moves that could solve a lot of those problems and then this, this would be a really great project. I, I do completely appreciate the design the materiality. I think this is a really successful uh, proposal. Uh, just a couple of things to unlock it a little bit. That's all from me. Thank you. Uh, Jennifer Sisson. Thank you. And thank you, Edward and Liam, for your presentations. Uh, I have to agree with uh, the comments that Jennifer and Dana have made. Uh, and I think with all of their comments, uh, I do think you have a couple of really good things going uh, in addition to that. You've kind of kept that the major shadow impacts away from those residences to the north. Your wind study, at least for March, uh, or sorry, the shadow study for March uh, shows very minimal shadow impacts on the residences, so I appreciate that. Um, your wind study shows that you've uh, actually, in some cases, improved conditions along the building frontages, which is great to see. Uh, and I, I do like the commercial frontage on Highway 8, uh, you know, bearing in mind whether it's um, going to be feasible or not. I would appreciate, even if it's not feasible, that you keep in mind some flexibility for the future, that that might become more of a commercial use uh, as the area transitions to more of a pedestrian and transit oriented space over time. Um, and kind of in that same vein, I'd suggest that the patio might actually make more sense at the building frontage as opposed to off to the side where uh, you've kind of shown that there'd be a pedestrian connection through it. Um, and also to echo uh, my colleagues, I, I do find that the amenity space at grade is lacking. Uh, I think a lot more could be done with this. And if you look at pushing uh, commercial and visitor parking underground, that would open up a lot of more space on the site for you to develop that amenity space more. Um, I appreciate that you've shown long-term bike parking uh, and some visitor and commercial bike parking at grade. Uh, I think maybe that bike parking could be more related to the commercial uses, assuming there are any. Um, and overall, I really do think that this can set a, a really good precedent for the area for a mixed use development. Um, with a few tweaks here and there as, as um, the other panel members have noted. So thank you very much for this and uh, look forward to seeing it. Uh, so I, I guess I'm gonna echo some of what the panelists have said. We don't know that I have uh, much new observations to bring other than just maybe a little elaboration on some of the comments. I think in general, yes, there, there's a kind of a uh, credible architectural character that the design has that's, I think, relatively successful in terms of the establishment of the lower podium and then the sort of stepping up uh, that reflects some of the 
transitions from the surrounding neighborhood in that, that sense I think that the the general architectural strategy is successful um, not as convinced as the massing as how it sits on the relatively tight site and when you think about as Jennifer uh, Mallard re referred to imagining the the development of this site into the future which is really one of the questions um, how it does set a precedent fairly narrow uh, side yards particularly on the one side there um, it's not particularly successful some for, for the views for and spatial density seems a bit tight on that sense I think that there are some ways to unlock that and uh, maybe more innovative uh, strategy for the approach to the ground floor plan and the and where where you go down to underground parking and where the loading is located if it can be pulled forward to the front of the site will liberate you know not just the back portion of the site but also the sides and maybe even allow for some movement of the main mass of the building you know beyond some kind of you know entry zone where you know there's vehicle circulation once you're beyond that you could maybe crank the plan to place the mass a little more central and a little more generosity on the one side for a setback from future development um i mean i guess we're all waiting as referred to the commercial development i i, I think commercial there i think there is a commercial answer particularly in the long run uh for the front of the site and dirt definitely with uh, development of this density if that is the future of the whole surrounding then i think commercial uh you know supportable and 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 worthy of uh having a street front i'm not convinced that the frontage design of the right of way really is uh imagining a, a successful interaction between that commercial position and uh, the street frontage and how that you know the multiple sidewalks multiple boulevards um i think that there once the commercial use is identified, I think that whole zone has to be revisited to more, uh, you know, encourage a successful, even the location of the commercial relative to, to the parking as it's present, presented now seems rather uh, indirect and not, you know, it seems you might want to consider that location to be more close to where the parking is. But having said that, I agree with earlier comments that the parking in that sort of you know u-turn relationship to get onto that those commercial parking spots is somewhat unsuccessful and generates a kind of a weird uh the wide entryway that tapers down and sort of how you know cars are wandering through that trying to figure out where the lanes are and stuff like that it seems a bit um unsuccessful and unresolved and i think there's lots of opportunity that you know can be unlocked on the site there if that's uh pursued um having said that i think that uh you know the density is generally you know something that's not outrageous in this context and and uh, i think that the rest of the one, one hopes well to be honest with you it would be like nice to see uh even some you know a vision for this whole area in terms of how it might uh, be developed that's maybe more of a, a city initiative but there seems to be a number of properties that uh, even assembly might might generate a, a more uh, uh, reasonable servicing strategies and placement of, of of future development there. But the site is definitely ripe for development, as we can see from the photos and the and what's not and whatnot. So, while I provide a lot of of specific commentary, I do think that there's a quite a successful. Uh, project embedded this and and certainly encourage you to take a look at uh, some of the suggestions we are made and uh encourage you to to uh continue on your uh, exploration of the site thank you very much and i don't know if you have any questions i i saw some noise from the the denny uh uh commentary at one point i don't know if he wants to say anything at this point that might have been missed in the presentation earlier uh um know if he can uh, successfully uh, connect yet uh, anyway I guess not I think Denny said he had uh, audio now
Well, if there's nothing else, I, th I think we're uh, complete there. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, many times. Hello? Hello? We can hear you, Denny. Yeah. I know, I'm doing a... I think you might have two mics going there. Liam? Yeah, I'm here. I think, I'm sorry. I think we can probably... Are you there, Denny? Yeah, I, I drafted. I, I really apologize. It's been a bit of a technical nightmare. I've listened to most of it, and um, I seem to be connected now through audio. Um, can you all hear me? Yes. Yeah, I, I think we were Thank just you. wrapping up, Denny. Yeah, no worries. I, I'm not here to sort of extend this meeting. I did hear some of the comments, and they're all sort of some of the positive and critique um, as well received. Uh, thank you for all of that. Um, and I'm definitely happy to um, our office follow up individually with any of the panel to revisit some of the questions that are specifically related to architectural. Ian, thanks for stepping in. And uh, no, no problem. Yeah, I do my best to be an architect for ten minutes, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. I no think problem. Daniel, you may want to wait just for the feedback. I don't think we're expecting you to individually contact us on this project, but I think there will be. Uh, the, the information will be transmitted to you through the city, or you can also listen to it again, I guess, once it's posted on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I will, actually. I, I got it all piecemeal. I, I did tune in when Jennifer started uh, with some of the comments. And uh, again, I think they're all very helpful to construct. There's a lot of uncertainty, definitely, with some of the commercial space and its use, and uh, that starts to play out. Some of these site plan issues will be fully resolved. But uh, thank you again for um, with the review and the interest, we look forward to working with you all. Okay. Well, thank you everyone for participating with the design review panel. Uh, that will conclude today's meetings and uh, we'll look for everyone again in February. Okay, have a good afternoon. Thank so you. Much, everyone, take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.